All right, well, welcome back, everybody. Uh, I'm uh, Greg Fisher uh, from Lunar G, and after one day of the conference, I, I noticed I just really don't have a lot of people coming up to me and complaining to me, and so I, I figure these people know, don't know who I am. So um, let's see here. Um, so anyway, I'm among other things, I'm one of the moderators of the GL Slang uh, repo. I've uh, done quite a bit of development and maintenance in that repo. Um, I am one of the, I was one of the um, main contributors to Spear V Opt, which uh, is used to do uh, shrinking of Spear V and uh, as well as legalization of, uh, um, of Spear V. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, I've dabbled in DXC a little bit. Um, I also uh, worked on um, GPU assisted validation, the uh, the shader tool chain piece of that, and uh, and debug printf as well. So, um, and uh, most recently, uh, one of my our <clears throat> one of my projects was to uh, work on um, source level debugging uh, of shaders in in uh, render doc, uh, and working on the shader tool tool chain part of that. Um, so we're going to talk about, um, kind of go over what RenderDoc is a, a little bit for those of you who, who haven't yet uh, tried it. Um, we're going to talk about the uh, the compiler side of this, the uh, extend uh, the, the the information uh, that uh, is injected into the uh, in, into the Spear V, um, and uh, how to generate it. Finally, we'll, we're going to attempt uh, temp fate and try to do a live demo of, uh, of uh, shader source level uh, debugging in RenderDoc. So um, RenderDoc, as, as probably a number of you know, is uh, a graphics debugger uh, for Vulkan and, and other APIs as well. Um, you can find it at renderdoc.org. Um, it uh, captures, it, uh, a frame, it can use the capture frame and then debug that frame, essentially uh, inspection of um, all the commands that go into creating that frame. Um, and part of that is uh, looking at the shaders uh, that, that go into uh, creating that frame and uh, and being able to debug it. Now, there up, up till now, there actually has been a way um, uh, to debug the shaders for a frame, but it's been at the uh, Spear V uh, assembly level, and uh, which is a little bit kind of low level. Um, so, uh, Balder uh, Carlson uh, added uh, source level uh, debugging to RenderDoc as well, which gives you a little bit nicer, um, as, as you know, uh, source line stepping ability to look at local variables, um, using the uh, actual user names and uh, seeing the values and so on. Uh, currently, this capability is um, supported for fragment shaders, vertex shaders, and compute shaders. So um, non-semantic shader debug info 100, big mouthful. What is this? This is actually an extended instruction set that was developed by Balder Carlson, um, the, the author of RenderDoc. The non-semantic part of it means that the, um, so the, these are the instructions that are injected into Spear V to allow uh, for uh, shader source level debugging. Um, the non-semantic part means that these instructions can, um, can be uh, ignored by drivers. Um, and, uh, but um, but not by tools. <laughs> so the tools do have to, to care about these things. Um, and uh, the, this uh, set of extended instructions were, was actually derived from a very similar uh, set of um, Spear V instructions called OpenCL Debug Info 100, uh, which was developed for, um, uh, for uh, OpenCL kernels. Uh, and that was um, actually derived from a much older standard and idea, which is DWARF, a debugging um, 
debugging information uh, that's used to essentially keep track of, um, well, to allow for um, source level debugging in the presence of uh, code optimization. Um, now, uh, in particular, at, when, when uh, code is optimized, uh, especially shader uh, code, um, you get almost in, in uh, all of your functions are completely inlined um, as well. And then most, almost all, uh, all local variables are eliminated. And so, um, uh, so, so this, it, uh, this instruction set then helps to kind of keep track of, um, of this after the optimizer has kind of gotten rid of it. Um, good. <clears throat> Just a quick example of what we're, what, what uh, these instructions look like, but um, we've got uh, a debug source instruction, which keeps track of um, the, uh, the, the, the actual um, source file uh, that and and also the original text of the shader and so this is actually the the entire uh, text of your shader is usually stuck into your spear v um, we've got uh, debug line and um, instructions which help kind of tag all of the spear v instructions to the the uh, source line that they belong to um, we've got to they basically replicate the entire type system um, to keep track of high-level type information, keep track of global variables, very, um, and, and even more importantly, local variables, which are usually eliminated by the optimizer. And there's a, um, a couple of instructions that also keep track of, um, as, as optimization gets rid of these local variables, it um, we uses uh, the, the debug value um, instruction to kind of pin different va um, pin values to the local variables as the execution proceeds. In addition, there's um, some instructions that keep track of um, the, the, uh, all, the, all of your functions, uh, even after inlining is uh, done and all, of, all but main has been removed. And uh, also keeping track of scope, which is nice. You'll see when I do the demo that um, uh, we it's uh, as as you uh, proceed through the execution, only certain variables are alive, and so this kind of helps to weed out and only show you the relevant local variables uh, at at any point in time. All right. So, um, all right, so as I said, um, th these instructions uh, are supported, um, generated and supported by the tool chain, um, both for um, DXC and GeoSlang generate, um, now we'll, we'll generate these instructions. Um, th this um, then can, uh, we'll, we'll go through, quite often we'll go through the optimizer. Um, and uh, then um, fi finally uh, into RenderDoc. I think, let's see if I missed that point. Um, one, thing, one thing about optimization, I will say, um, especially for HLSL, um, those of you that have um, been around for a while and done um, DX programming, um, you might have used FXC first uh, to compile um, and uh, your uh, HLSL uh, into DXIL. Um, actually, and, and, then, and then DXC, which has now followed it. But um, HLSL requires optimization, um, in particular, for, actually, for, even for uh, DirectX as well as for Vulkan. There are some features in that language uh, that cannot be handled by DirectX or by Vulkan. Uh, and so you almost need full-blown optimization uh, to get rid of these things. And so, um, so keeping track of this in the presence of optimization is very important, especially for HLSL. And also 
But if you're programming in GLSL and you want to use the optimizer to reduce your Spear V size, this also is nice. All right, so uh, generating uh, debug information uh, with DXC, here's the, um, there's very little you actually are going to have to do, but this is, this is one of them, is uh, type these characters in, particularly the uh, uh, Spear V debug equals Vulcan with source. That's probably the most important. And for some reason, we did create a, an option, which is uh, SPV debug equals Vulcan, which doesn't include source. I'm not really sure what, how, uh, if that's all that useful, but um, you want to make sure that you've got uh, the source in your uh, Spear V as well. And if you're not generating Vulcan 1.3, you also have to include um, this the, the Spear V extension uh, non-semantic info as well. But for Vulcan 1.3 and afterwards, that's in core, so it's not needed. On the GL slang side, um, the option is uh, lowercase g cap v s, uh, and that again will include uh, the source into your uh, into your spear v. And GL slang can can it it can generate HLSL as uh, or compile HLSL as well as GLSL. Um, so the status. Um, everything that you're going to see is currently available in the uh, most recent SDK and in the most recent release of Baldur's uh, render, render doc. Um, he just did one a few days ago, 1.25, uh, and that one's got a, uh, at least one nice bug fix in it. So um, I'd recommend picking that up. Um, let's see. Um, we've... We've done quite, we did quite a bit of testing on this. Um, Dan Ginsberg at Valve um, compiled uh, a ton of shaders uh, and, and did a, uh, testing for us. Um, we've also went through nearly all of uh, Sasha's uh, samples and, uh, and, and uh, tested uh, debugging with that. Now, um, we, I do mention the geometry and tessellation shaders, although that those aren't supported right now by RenderDoc, but they, um, they are um, supported by the, the, the shader tool chain. Um, and ray tracing and mesh shaders are not currently supported yet, sorry. Um, all right, time for the demo. All right, let's see if we can figure this out. Here it is. So render doc. Start by, we're going to run um, Sasha's um, deferred shadows uh, sample. It's it's probably the nicest. It has the most interesting sh uh, shaders in it, both uh, with uh, if statements and and loops. So uh, we'll get the full effect here. Right. Now, and you need to, we'll need to get to a, uh, a call here that actually uh, does some drawing. So we'll pick this one. Go into this tab and we'll pick a pixel of interest. Usually you'll as you know, you'll probably pick a pixel that's not the color you want it to be. Um, and then we go to debug. So this is all what you'd normally would do when you're using RenderDoc. Um, in the past, you would have just gotten the, uh, the disassembly tab here. But um, if, if you've got uh, um, the debug information in your Spear V, then you'll, you'll get this automatically. Um, this screen, which is the uh, which is your your shader source, and really it's uh, pretty similar to most um, debugging IDEs that um, you you might have used in the past. Um, F10 will uh, single step, and um, you'll see the 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 window in the lower right hand corner. 
um, is a list of all the current live uh, local local variables, and the um, the the one that's most been the and the variables which have been most recently changed since your last uh, line that you would stop that um, will be highlighted in red. So um, here we'll. This if statement doesn't get executed, so it jumps over. Um, so uh, another uh, capability is setting a breakpoint with F9, and then you can uh, do F5, continue, goes right to that. And then um, it, it shows about five different variables that have changed since I uh, did that continue. And uh, F5 again will take me to the next iteration of that loop, so on. All right. And um, let's see here. Oh, yeah. So we also have. Another way to do continue here is up here, execute forwards. And you can execute to cursor. Sorry, I'm, nah, that was not, is that what I want? No, that's not what I, oh, oh, I see. Yeah, there's one more breakpoint here. I'll get rid of that breakpoint. Sorry, I'm, I have a, a tremors here and I'm kind of uh, a little nervous right now, so it's, making it more fun than usual. I'll get rid of that breakpoint. Come on. Yeah, this is. All right. Come on, Greg, sorry. This is the one part I, I wasn't as nervous during my practice. So. I'll, I'll get it. I'll, I'll, I'll probably have to call up one of my uh, younger uh, compatriots to do this. Uh, all right. So then execute forwards. Let's see if I can actually do this. Yeah. Two cursor. Sorry. Come on. I know you're all rooting for me. There. Okay, good. Um, Okay, um, you'll notice also execute, you can also execute forward, not just to cursor, um, but to the, say the next sample, some of their interesting points, uh, and the next point that a NAN or an infar is generated and so on. Um, finally then, just like in most IDEs, you can actually step into um, functions um, with F11 and, um, and you'll see that then also your, your set of variables has, local variables has changed. And we can even step into this function then as well, and so on. And one of the, the other fun things, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure, I don't think you can do this in Visual Studio, but you can actually step backwards um, by using shift uh, F, F10. So that's that's kind of a slick thing. Actually, it's because um, but this is simulated, uh, it's or emulated in in the debugger, right? It's not. This isn't really on the GPU. So um, this is this is all emulated. All right, good. Um, I think that's everything I wanted to say about this. All right, so future work, squashing bugs. Also, um, there is in, uh, in the, uh, the spec for the um, debug info, there's a capability to actually store off uh, the debug information um, external to Spear V 
um, so that your 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 shaders are not bogged down with this. Um, you can keep keep you'll be able to keep the information off to the side. Um, generating this information can increase the size of your spear V by two to three x. So. Um, uh, it's so it's it's a little it's a little bulky now. So th this would be a little nicer to keep keep this information off to the side. Um, just a quick thanks to uh, to Jeremy Hayes at Lunar G for um, he he actually prepared the the initial uh, presentation for this and um, also uh, he and I worked on adding this capability to, G to GL Slang. Uh, the Google guys. Um, for, uh, for their work in adding this to DXC, or at least a majority of it, uh, and support in Spearby tools for, um, for the uh, debug info. Balder for uh, being Balder. And uh, <laughs> um, again, Dan Ginsberg and Sasha. So um, you can, uh, there's, uh, my contact information, if you have any issues, probably just bring them up to GL Slang or, or DXC right away and we'll catch them there. And uh, we got a white paper that describes this as well. Uh, any questions? Yes. Um, so you mentioned how uh, actually the emulator is not turning on. Yes. Uh, one of the pain points uh, I know. Um, so I, I, I'll, I, what, if you if you give me your contact information, I can get you in in in, in touch with Balder. He, he he probably has a better idea for this. So yeah, um, I, I'm not quite sure what his current plans are. I I, I realize I, I should have really pulled that together a little bit better for this presentation. But, uh, good question. So the question was, um, is is there plans to do a better job of um, emulating uh, compute? Um, in particular, uh, SIMD, uh, it's it's the, it's SIMD nature uh, in in this uh, uh, in in render doc and in and in, in the shader uh, emulation. So so um, I'll I'll try to get that information. Yes. I'm so what could you just repeat that one more time? Uh, the public concept mm -hmm. are actually dedicated So this is, is this is done in a um, platform independent way. So this does not does not uh, simulate di di different uh, architectures. Uh, so this is um, a, a little bit of a. So yeah, you, you you might write if you if you're running true SIMD or something like that, and, and you get something in a, in a different pixel or whatever, right? Great. And finally, just uh, don't forget that <laughs> your uh, your annual developers uh, survey. So, uh, but uh, th thank you very much.